Tanzania, a village in East Africa, exists by selling cotton abroad. The cotton is white, soft and elastic. It generates money and work. Money for some and work for the others. Life is hard and the soil is barren. The raw material cotton grows here. Cotton is a linchpin of the economy in many countries and has for many centuries been the most important raw material from which our clothes are made. Pictures from America, pictures from Australia, pictures from China and South America, the Industrial Revolution and nature, mass production, cotton fields like factories. Only profits count. Lots of machinery, lots of chemicals, lots of money, producing lots of cotton, cheaply. Each cotton plant is sprayed with pesticides up to 25 times each year. Green fly and white fly, caterpillars and bollworm, fungal diseases and root infections threaten the cotton plant and the soil. The big producers set the pace and the others want to keep up with them. Lots of machinery, lots of chemicals, lots of money. Chemical weapons in the war against hunger. That's what the sprays used to eliminate cotton pests were once called. The pumps and the poisonous sprays were imported from the northern part of the world for a lot of money. They are expensive. For the small farmers of the developing countries, they are becoming increasingly unaffordable. The poor won't be able to pay the costs because for the people in Africa it means paying for the same quantity of chemical and technical equipment with ever more and ever cheaper cotton. The so-called free market is driving them ever deeper into debt. Thousands of them have already thrown in the towel and hundreds of thousands will follow suit. Muhenda, a village in Tanzania. Here the chemical weapons were much favored. For decades, cotton was the sole source of income for the entire village. It provided a living for all 900 families. A state-run model farm trained the farmers in a form of agriculture that depended on the use of chemicals. Today, the field is dead. Nobody lives from cotton in Mohenda, and the state farm closed down years ago. We don't have pesticides for the cotton, that's our problem. We desperately need them. We need chemicals. It's because of them that we've stopped planting cotton. We need pesticides, insecticides and tractors. If we even had just two tractors in the village, the people in the village would all go back to work. Just look at this wretched cotton. 
The soil here is ruined now, and we can grow neither cotton nor maize on this field. We're not far from starvation. There's no cotton growing on our fields. The soil has become infertile, we have no tractors for plowing, and the earth is dead. The only thing that grows in our village is problems, I'm afraid. In the late 70s, everyone in this village lived from cotton. Mohinda was not a village like any other. Here there was once a large cotton farm. But all that's left of it today are ruins and relics from the age of chemicals. The price of cotton got lower and lower, but in 20 years expenditure on pesticides and fertilizers increased threefold. In the end, cotton cost more to produce than it brought in by way of revenues. That was cotton of the very best quality. Look, the cotton has no pests in it, even after 10 years. The pesticide we used was so powerful. Yes, you can still even smell it. That was a great pesticide. Yes, just great. It was all ready for transport. Yes, but today the chemicals are too expensive for us. If you grow cotton, you can't earn anything. Buying the chemicals just puts you into debt. The price of the cotton is the plaything of the large producers. The price is set far away from the small farmers in East Africa. A short trip to Switzerland for research purposes. A Tanzanian farmer with a degree in agriculture came here in search of niche markets. He had studied organic farming in Europe a number of years ago, and many people, business people from Switzerland and Germany, were interested in supporting development projects in his village in the western part of the country. Since then, Louis Kapanda has been head of a project to promote the organic cultivation of cotton. <laughs> This clean cotton became an opportunity for the East African Village Project. Our main message, bio-re, organic cotton. Organic cotton as an alternative that's suitable for the mass market. It's the answer to a need that we in the economy have to satisfy. Customers want properly produced textiles, a demand we regard today as being in tune with the times we live in. We offer an economic fast track to ecological success. Thank you very much. There is still cotton in the western part of the country. Miatu. Here is Louis Kapanda, project head. If the, all the farmers could turn to be organic farmers and do away with the conventional farming, at least they could profit from their way of farming. That is what uh, my vision. Starvation had a foothold here, but then the development project created the contract-based production of ecologically cultivated cotton. <laughs> In the previous years, when this organic cotton wasn't introduced in our country, even in this area, most farmers who were farming cotton in a conventional way used to spray these uh, artificial pesticides. And there were so many reported cases of deaths or some ailments resulting from either poisoning or wind spraying. Sometimes people were spraying against the wind so they could find themselves sick or with some headaches or stomachache, but they were resulting from the, the pesticide drift. And uh, that type of conventional way of farming was not all that economic, not all that sustainable, because they have to depend on some artificial fertilizers and pesticide, which also were not all that available at all times. And they are also very expensive to buy. Most of the farmers here have cows or goats or sheep, so we encourage them to use the farmyard manure which is readily available here. I can still remember how happy I felt after I had sold my first clean cotton. I got 300,000 shillings for it. My children had meat to eat and milk to drink. 
I was so happy. I was sure that there was a God in heaven and that he was on my side. This year I have even planted 24 acres of clean cotton. Thanks to the cotton, I was able to buy this trailer and a bicycle, the plow and the goat. We were hungry. I worked myself to the bone on the fields just to get the bare minimum for survival. When the people came with the idea that we should grow cotton without chemicals, I volunteered right away because I hoped that it could perhaps improve our lives. And I was able to build a house and then another one. They learned to keep the soil fertile and to cultivate new plants for food. Helpers and backers from Switzerland and Germany give them encouragement. The neem tree provides the basis for a natural medicine and an indigenous insecticide, securing the cotton without recourse to chemicals. The leaves of the neem are boiled and the liquid simply sprayed onto the cotton. The earth is barren. Cotton very quickly exhausts the soil it grows in. A system of crop rotation is essential. Marco Nedulum, a helper from the project, explains the future rotation of Mama Shishi's crops to her, using a plan of her fields. Each year the crops will change from one field to the next. The annual alternation of cotton, sorghum, peanuts and beans means that it is not always the same nutrients that are removed from the soil year after year. The harvest stays good and the soil has a chance to recover. <laughs> Their harvests grew from year to year. Today they enjoy a modest prosperity, and their confidence and sense of security is growing. Oh, yeah. A second and third village have joined the project, and the number of small farmers now participating has increased to several hundred. The clean cotton has brought prosperity to the people of Miatu. The helpers from outside have become their partners. They have made the future possible. The modest dreams of the unassuming people of Miatu are being fulfilled, deservedly so. Helpers and backers from Switzerland and Germany encourage them buy their cotton and protect it. A complete collection of organically produced underwear has been launched and is now awaiting customers on the shelves of a big chain of supermarkets. The visitor from East Africa proudly inspects the end products of the white gold from his villages. Sales are still modest, but they're growing. A market that signifies hope? This is more final. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you. I'm happy that I can share the knowledge I have with the, the farmers and the extensionists who are involved in the project. These six years of the organic cotton project in Tanzania increased the, my knowledge of understanding and then my, the farmers and the extension staff from Tanzania can benefit a lot. There is uh, an overt 
low cost of production to the farmers who are doing organic cotton production where compa compared to the uh, fellow farmers who are doing conventional cotton production. The white gold from Mohenda has become worthless. The small farmer Mohammed is throwing his contaminated cotton onto the rubbish heap. <laughs> Miatu. Starvation had a foothold here. Then came the experiment with organic cotton. A new market was born. Hadina, 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 Hadina,